mentioned that you started into yoga in the fourth grade. Yeah. Right, yoga as exercise or yoga as... Initially, yes, as exercise, okay. but then I started um, eventually around, uh, particularly uh, around seventh, eighth grade, I started getting into pranayama and actual the, the actual meditating. Okay, in the seventh grade. Okay, did yeah. anybody show you this? You read a book or how did really? you well, get into that? Uh, you know, uh, I had a, a couple... Uh, Random symbolic Buddhists from time to time and wander through, but mainly it was reading. Uh, Love the you know the junior high and the high school library. Yeah. Do, you, do you still practice the this? Really and truly not. No. no okay. Um, would you consider yourself to be a good person, Patrick? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you heard of the Ten Commandments? It's yeah. kind of like a. Do you know kind any of. of them? Yes, I do. But actually, um, there was a character named Mises okay. who went on top of a mountain and came down with 15. And before that, there was a character named Nebo okay. uh, who went up on top of a mountain, uh, talked to one god, and from there the. How many did he come down with? Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, you know, t ten's a good number. Yeah. Let me ask you a few questions from, from ten to see if you're a good person. Okay. One of the commandments, and it's probably the same around, you know, you should not tell lies. You know, that's one of the commandments. And, like, if you want to be treat other people... Well, in people, your emotional relationships, yeah. maybe not, but as far as day-to-day, -day, you can't get around it. The yeah. cop pulls you over. You got everything in your car, and you're speeding, and you weren't signaling. What well, are you doing? Why did I pull you over? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if I told you a lie, what would I be called? You would be called a liar. I would be, right. Okay. Have you ever taken anything that didn't belong to you, Patrick, and it's on your whole life? Yes. So what does that make? A thief. A thief. That's right. Now, one of, one of the commandments was that you should not commit adultery. You're probably not married, so you haven't committed adultery. But Jesus said that if you so much as look with lust at someone, you've committed adultery with them already in your heart. So on this campus, have you ever looked with lust? Certainly. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Thanks for your honesty. Here's one more question from the Ten Commandments. Have you ever used God's name as a four-letter cast word, like said, oh, G-O-D, or Jesus' name? You know, you hear people say that a lot. Certainly. Okay. Ellipsis, uh, no. Um, that's how it's used in yeah. colloquial American language yeah, to begin with. And I, ever... My native language is colloquial uh -huh. American English, okay. so... Do you ever wonder why people do that? You know, they take the name of God and kind of drag it down into the mud. And I would really prefer that we take it, this conversation in a direction not uh, uh, totally away from one of these. Okay, okay, that's fine. But Patrick, by your own admission, you did admit to being a liar, a thief, an adulterer. If the Ten Commandments is the standard of goodness, so if, if, just the big if, I know you don't believe, but the big if, if this was the standard for getting into heaven, the Ten Commandments, you know, if that's what God was to use to judge you on the Day of Judgment, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty of breaking his law? Would it be carnal sins? No, just by the four that we've asked you. There's another six, but we're, we're not going to go to those for the sake of time. Do you right. think you'd be innocent or guilty? Well, I've already said it. Yeah, you have already said So do you think if this was the standard, we, would you end up in heaven or hell? But no, just, it's not the standard I believe in. It's oh, well, I know you don't you, believe so. in it. I know you don't believe, but I'm just saying if, if this was the standard. Well, you know, the standard is actually, even in the United States, uh, between Protestants and Christians and different yeah, denominations. Yeah, but we're not talking about religion, you know. But we're we just are talking, talking we about... We are actually, right now, we are talking about uh, monotheistic, particularly Judeo-Christian monotheistic uh, dogma. Well, 
we're just saying if this was the standard. Um, well, you know, my thoughts on St. Peter, he's actually a pretty interesting character, just like St. Joseph. Um, well, you know, St. Peter's not going to be standing at the door letting people in. It's God who's going to decide whether we get in or not. So. Um, well, I think the I think the life review as part of the after death process, okay. which seems to come up uh, across the board with people okay. who have had near death experiences, and if something like it pops up in most of those uh, uh, religions of the world. Um, you know, I I really don't I don't steal anymore, and okay. uh, as far as adultery goes, I that's kind of a construction of monotheism I I have hormones in a brain so oh, yeah. I, do I respect females absolutely do I, I really I, I, I don't see a lack of a lot of validity in adultery for a non-married person the emotional damage it does to a spouse uh, is tremendous so yeah. that's bad well of course you know the bible does say that all liars thieves Adulterers, blasphemers will have their place in the lake of fire. That's according to the Bible. Now, well, I think I think Lucifer, in the sense of an archangel who, according to the Book of Job, apparently has access to the you know, I guess you call it court of heaven. Okay. What does that even mean about? Well, he's not in hell. The devil's not in hell. So if hell is a place where those who don't adhere to uh, the Ten Commandments go, uh, why is it bad? Well, Jesus said it was a place of eternal suffering, torment. And do you know why God, what God did, so you wouldn't have to go to hell? Which, I mean, which you, organization are you with? Is this a university organization, or is this? Well, let's no, go is back. There, no, no, I'm asking you right now. Are you with a theistic organization conducting this documentary? I'm not with in any organization. What? Okay. The person who is videotaping it and orchestrating this documentary. Okay, we're, we're just doing it for ourselves. We're, okay, um, okay, okay. You know, I'm a student at a Bible college, and, and so I'm just doing it for... Okay. For practice, and you know, we don't have to use use you. Um, no, you can use me. I just want to. I just. Yeah. I just uh, adhering to the social science uh, method. Yeah, we're, we're just I trying to get different opinions from different people. Okay. And, you know, the the fact is, a lot of people don't believe in God. They don't believe in hell or heaven. Well, and I, that's disa I disagree. Prerogative. I disagree. Yeah. I'm I'm not saying that I don't believe in higher power. I'm not saying that I don't believe in uh, karmic or spiritual growth. Okay. I'm not saying that if you, you know, are in a committed emotional relationship with a spouse, especially after you have uh, children, that if you are not unfaithful to them, it's not bad. Um, I'm saying that some of the universal truths of, uh, that have been narrowed down uh, and openly... Uh, plagiarized by the Hebrews, um, I, I think, I think if we were given as Judeo-Christian monotheists in the Western world, we kind of got the short end of the stick. Um, so, I have, a, I have a lot of personal, I don't know, I mean, I, I, I just think that I just think it's so incredibly stifling the idea of original sin, the idea of, uh, of the concept of blasphemy. How can you grow religiously if you don't ask questions? You know, and then you look at uh, not only uh, Roman Catholic, but a lot of the a lot of the Protestant denominations' approaches to well, those are natural questions, and it's good to grow, but. I think it's I think it's really tremendously threatening, and um, 
Well, imagine if you had an ant farm and, you know, you took all, you had an ant farm and you took care of all these little ants, you know, and then you decided you was going to take them out and put them in another one. All of a sudden these ants shook their fists at you and called you names and how dare you do this to us, you know. I mean, you would just okay. squash them, right? And see, God could squash us at any time because God's angry with us for sinning against Him. But do you I know see, what He but, did? But see, that's where your definition of God is mine. mine. I oh, think it's yeah. essentially different. Do you know what uh, God the, did? So, the king of the, uh, someone who presides over a bunch of slaves. They're not slaves. Yeah, ants yeah. are slaves. Ants are slaves to right. a queen. But you and, know, that's, and that's that's a motif that is so that permeates not only Catholicism, not only Judaism, not only monotheism in general. Mm -hmm. uh, look at look at look at the definition of Yahweh. Um, I do not know the source of this, but in a uh, book I was reading actually about Freemasonry, uh, they're interesting cats. But it turns out that Yahweh was it. Uh, not the name of one god, but in fact the god of war. So we're all a bunch of good slaves and we worship the god of war and he might ask us to go take our son up on a mountain and kill him. But oh, he'll, he'll pull the plug in the end. But he just wants to test us. And then look at, look at this whole... Look, uh, he has illegitimate Ishmael who becomes, who just leave in the desert. You know, you mentioned something about if the police stopped you and you had things in your car. Have you ever been stopped by the police? Yes. Okay. Then when you're stopped by the police, you really can't give an excuse because, you know, they've got you, right? And you go to court and the judge says, well, you owe this amount of fine. Mm -hmm. so, so they commit extortion right. against me because I'm non-violently using a psychotropic substance. Uh, in a manner that I personally don't want to harm anyone. Okay. Ideally, I would obtain it from a nonviolent dealer, you know, but the police, a police officer is the final step of enforcement on a global perversion and, and Judeo, uh, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting excited, so I'm having okay. trouble. Okay, well, don't get Wait, excited. Wait, no, no. You brought up, you brought up, you brought okay. up a policeman who. <laughs> I'm actually not a violent individual. No. A uh, police officer who pulls me over, and I am forced to lie to him, or else I will be put in a cage uh, with bound fists for uh, however long they feel about it, and then when I get out, I have to pay them. How many thousands of dollars? Yeah. With my, last, with my last, with my last little imagine incident, it was if over you seven. I, 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 oh, I'm if on the order of fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars for not because I was getting pulled over that day. So, and if you couldn't pay fifteen hundred dollars, they'd put you in jail, right, and make you stay there. No, I, I already went to jail. Oh, you went, I went to, to jail. jail for it. And, and you paid $1,500. Yeah. Now, could you have said to the judge, I'm real sorry, I won't do it again. I even put a nice shine on your car. Do you think the judge would have let you go? Well... Would he have let you go? I actually I actually wasn't arranged in that particular uh, incident. Uh, but the, the judge told me that I had to do that. I, had to, I was conscripted into community service. And on top of it, I had to attend classes that reinforced, uh, like we talked about, the drug of choice for Judeo-Christian monotheists. Uh, What's that? Alcohol. Oh. Okay. The blood of Christ. Uh, so, he wouldn't just let you go. The judge, even though you don't think that law was fair, and that's your opinion, the judge couldn't just let you go because he must have enforce the law because that was his job and see god must punish people who sin against them well see that's where but, that's where that's where you as a monotheist yeah. and me as a shamanically inspired left-hand path individual we differ i have a concept of spiritual development 
I'm going to be punished for my own choices anyway. If I'm alive with hate, then I'm going to be a miserable person. And that's how it is. You know, Jesus went up on the mount and gave a sermon. And he said, you know, turn the cheek so your enemy may strike your other cheek. That's nice, but... Yeah. That, that was to do with people insulting. Like if someone insults you, they would no, slap I think, you on the I think cheek. strike... Strike is actually entails well, that in was my, the, the way I speak English. Is, no, see, that's where that's where a lot of the perversion of quotes in a language that we don't speak that we that's that's what bothers me really deeply about a lot of monotheism. You know, I don't have a problem with the King James version of the Bible. I don't have a problem with other translations of the Bible. Their translations, though, and their translations. Yeah, you know, we can we can argue all day about what it means to strike. Okay, I think you have an actually very concise uh, argument you're trying to make, and I'm arguing with you on all of them, so I look scatterbrained. Um, but it's just monotheism in general, the motif of slavery. You know, you maybe without thinking about it, you brought up all these ants who are essentially clones of some queen, and then they make me mad because I steal their sugar, and I'm this uh, executioner, uh, God, uh, that, that in and of itself, you didn't, you didn't say, well, the great slave master in the sky is going to smash me down because I follow his rules. You didn't say that because yeah. you said that. You said that because that's just an inherent motif of the religion you practice. Imagine if that judge, though, had wanted to give you mercy, and instead of making you pay $1,500, that check. Took his robe, got off the bench, wrote a check out for fifteen hundred dollars. Then he could say, "Your case is dismissed because justice would have been served." And see, well, Patrick, well, let well, me no, give, give okay, me two minutes. But, okay. This is what God did for you, Patrick. Two thousand years ago, God took on human flesh in the form of Jesus Christ. He came to earth, lived a perfect, sinless life. And he went to the cross and took all your punishment upon him and mine. I've broken all tenets of mine. You killed? I hate it without cause, and Jesus said that's the same right, as Right, but the commandment says... And he took upon himself all the punishment that you deserve. This is what God did for you, so huh. you could be forgiven. Yeah. But what you're going to have to do is to repent of your sins and bring it with God. Well, you know, you know, there was, God is there, right, another, there, was another, there was another guy, his name was Buddha, you know, and he, he talked about the act of forgiveness as a result of, I'm paraphrasing, he talked about he talked about compassion in general, and you know, being a left-hand path individual, I'm uh, vastly more. Um, Supposing you're like, on the wrong path. No, no, no. I, I'm not, but I'm not on the wrong path, and I put a lot of thought into it. Uh, I put a whole lot of thought into it uh, in the course of my entire life, starting with. You know, being a very young child um, and having my own questions. You know what I mean? Um, I think, I think at this at this moment in history, you're you're taking on a motif that a lot of other uh, more insidious groups are taking. Uh, you know, we're on a university campus, we're being polite to each other, but right now there's. You know, there's a legitimate debate as to whether we should teach creation or evolution in schools. And that, I, I don't know, at the moment I have a lot of emotion, uh, a lot. I'm not bitter. I'm sorry, you know, monotheism is interesting if you're, uh, apparently predisposed to that sort of mind state where there's all these slaves and I went to the rivers of Zion and sat down in a strange land 
you know, because I'm just this slave who, by the way, stole the idea of Marxism, <laughs> by the way, stole the idea of uh, cuneiform. <laughs> um, you know, that's... Well, all I know is that... But I'm know. not inclined. I'm not... In, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously not inclined to... <laughs> to lean that way. I've had a lot of struggle with it as a... You know, as a... Before adolescence, as a nine-year-old, I had to struggle with the idea of, you know, well, I'm walking away from this, I'm turning my back on this, and I had this fear of this Punisher God sending me to a lake of fire, apparently administrated by an archangel, <laughs> who, had, well, who made war with God. the Bible says that all those whose names are not written in the Book of Life will be cast into the lake of fire, and that's the thing, it's your name written. And, you know... Well, now, see, now you're talking, now it sounds like you're Calvinist. And if you're, you, you take a very Calvinist motif well, to that. Well, the only way you can have your name... Well, are you a Calvinist? No, I don't even know what a Calvinist is, but the only way you can have your name written in the Book of Life is to repent, that's turn from your sins, okay. forsake them, and okay. put your trust in Jesus Christ, because he real rose briefly. again the real, third real, day. Real, real briefly, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have, I, real briefly, you know, you, you've given me the whole ants in the ant hill um, scenario, um, and you can Forget tell. You can, okay, okay. Well, well you brought it up. It was in the argument. You can tell. Okay, you can tell from my accent that it's not different from everyone around. I uh, grew up in America. Yada yada. I take it you're English, English. obviously. Yeah, and it sounds like, uh, from my experience with. Uh, the people of the United Kingdom. It sounds like you speak a, a dialect that I was taught called High English. All right. Uh, what ethnic? Actually, no. I was born in the city of London, so it's oh, more Cockney, of a Cockney yeah. accent. But yeah. I've lived here for 40 years, so it's changed. Right. Right. But are you ethnically uh, a Briton, or what's that? I'm just wondering. I'm just Partially a little interested. Uh, yeah, I have I, a big affinity, affinity to London. Great yeah. town. Uh, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, never mind. I was hoping that she would say... But I didn't uh, grow up going to church. So, right. you know, well, I'm glad, any kind of well, you know, religious background. You know, you know, my grandmother was actually... She, uh, uh, my choice, converted to Catholicism because she was apparently inclined to that sort of right-hand path uh, direction, and that's cool, you know. I don't steal anymore because I follow the social con compact, uh, you know, and it's not good to steal, and I've been stolen from it, blah, blah, blah. But that's because of my spiritual development. It's not just Jesus told me I couldn't. Well, you know, what sins 10 years ago are still sins because time doesn't forgive sins. You know, if we, if I robbed a bank and it took them 10 years to find me, I would still have to Yeah, but, 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 but in your own spiritual path, if you robbed a bank and, you know, taking the rap, that's great. You know, have fun getting tied up in a cage, getting beaten down every day by maybe a mentally retarded adult who you're going to be your roommate for a couple of years. Uh, you know, that sucks. Yeah. But you know, the only reason we come out and talk to people is because we care. Right. We really do. Right. Um.